complex numbers as vectors. So a vector is fully defined by magnitude and direction. And we've kind of seen a little bit of this before with complex numbers. So if we draw up our Argand diagram, we get our real axis and our imaginary axis. And we know a complex number can be represented by either in Cartesian form or mod arg form. And we're going to be interested in here for mod arg form. So if we have some complex number z, we can say that its distance away from the origin is its modulus. And the angle theta it makes with the positive real axis is its argument. So this theta is just the argument of z. And this fully defines the complex number and we can treat it as a vector going from the origin to that point. And some things about vectors we can, we can look at that if we have our real axis an imaginary axis. If we have some complex number z1 that was out here and another one z2 that was out here and we treated them as vectors We could say that the addition of those vectors form a parallelogram. So we could imagine an identical z2 here and an identical z1 here. And the parallelogram that it forms is the equivalent vector of this diagonal to be z1 plus Z2. Now, the diagonal going from Z2 to Z1 gives us the vector Z2 minus Z1. And the vector going from Z1 to Z2 gives us Z1 minus Z2. Also, We know this angle here is the argument of Z1. This angle here is the argument of Z1 plus Z2. And also, if we extend Z2 minus Z1 over here, we get this angle being the argument of Z2 minus Z1. Let's have another look at an interesting property with vectors. Let's draw up another Argand diagram. With real and imaginary axis. And let's draw in a simple vector that goes from the origin to the point one. And let's call it, let's call this complex number Z. And Z will just equal, has a real part of one and no imaginary part. So essentially, this complex number is just equal to one. Let's multiply this complex number by I. So multiplying both sides by I, 
we get zi. Now, 1 times i is just i. And let's go ahead and draw our new complex number. So now we have the complex number 0 plus 1i. And that complex number, or vector, is this going through the point 1 on the imaginary axis. Let's again multiply both sides by i. So then we get z times i squared and 0 times i is 0 and i times i is i squared which we know is equal to minus 1. And this can be represented as minus 1 plus 0 i. And let's go ahead and draw this vector in here. So we get minus 1 plus 0 i was just purely on the real axis going to minus 1. Let's again multiply both sides by i. So we're up to z i cubed. I know we can simplify these, but we'll leave them as this. Minus 1 times i is minus i. And 0i times i is just 0. And let's go ahead and plot this. And that's just equivalent to 0 minus 1i. And if we plot this, we're, up, we're down here, going to minus 1 on the imaginary axis. And finally, let's again multiply both sides by i. So we get zi to the 4. Now 0 times i is 0, and minus 1i times i gives us minus i squared. And i squared is minus 1. Minus times minus 1 gives us 1. And that's equivalent to 1 plus 0i. And then if we pop that, we're back over here, going to 1. So why did we go through all of that? So the reason we went through all of that is we have an interesting property if we're looking at complex numbers as vectors. When we multiply a vector by i, it rotates the vector counterclockwise. Rotates the vector counterclockwise by pi on 2 radians every time we multiply by i. Let's have a look at an example. We're going to let z and w be two complex numbers. We're going to say if the modulus of z equals the modulus of w, we want to show that z plus w divided by z minus w is purely imaginary. And another way to say that is that if this was equal to some other complex number p, we could say that the real part of p has to equal 0. So let's draw a diagram to help us out. So we're drawing an argand diagram, real axis and imaginary axis. Let's draw in any complex number z, let's say here, let's say z is there, and w, but we do know that the their Modulus have to be equal, so we'll try and make them the same distance apart, or the same the same length. So we we'll say another one w, and we're trying to make those lengths the same. And we have expressions for z plus w and z minus w. And usually when you have these kind of expressions, it hints at the fact of drawing a parallelogram. Let's go ahead and draw some expressions in. So z plus w. Again, we can imagine 
shifting these vectors like so and connecting this part to get our expression for z plus w and our expression for z minus w will be going from w to z so this is our z minus w now if the modulus of z equals the modulus of w this means that we now have a rhombus here and if we have a rhombus the intersection of the diagonals has to be at 90 degrees which means that if we take this vector z minus w and multiply it by i we rotate it pi on 2 radians counterclockwise and it ends up being in the same direction as z plus w so let's write an expression that makes that true so we have z minus w and if we multiply this vector by i and because it's not the same these diagonals are not the same length we'll also have to scale that vector so we'll also multiply by some constant let's call it k and that will in fact equal z plus w now we're trying to show that z plus w over z minus w is purely imaginary so let's go ahead and divide both sides by z minus w so they cancel out and we get z plus w over z minus w equals ki and another way to write that would be ki plus zero and you can see there's no real part to this complex number it only consists of an imaginary part so we've successfully shown that the real part of this complex number is zero